everybody, and welcome to the Dr. Psych Mom Show. Um, today we are going to talk about why your wife doesn't want sex two days in a row, which is something very upsetting to many men. I'll discuss why it's upsetting. I'll discuss why they don't want it. Um, if all of these sexual issues are things that you struggle with, or any of them, I have hired a sexologist at my practice, Best Life Behavioral Health. Her name is Heather, um, and you should definitely reach out and click on my link for my group practice in the description of the episode because she can work in all states, unlike therapists. She's not a therapist. She's a registered sexologist, and she can coach you through uh, these intimacy issues either as a couple or as an individual. So that's a service that I provide. So many people want to work with me. I can't work with everybody you know, and, and everybody can't afford my rates either. So now there's somebody who is a bit more accessible, obviously does not accept insurance as not a therapist, but still, um, more affordable than me. So you should reach out about Heather. She's real nice. Okay. Um, oh, and also a lot of you have wives who struggle with or are struggling with as yourself, uh, the aftermath of childhood sexual abuse and Heather's open about being a survivor and she, um, so she can work with that as well as the more normal, like libido mismatch sorts of things. All right. Anyway, that was just a plug for her because I hired her to help you guys, all y'all. So, so many of you reach out that you struggle with these things that I can't help all of you. So, uh, now to the topic of the podcast, and please do subscribe because the most recent episode, the subscriber paid episode, was on the benefits of having sex when you're not feeling close. Anathema in today's society, but yet practical and commonsensical in every previous generation. Okay, so moving to today's topic, a lot of guys say we went on this romantic vacation um, and we still didn't have sex two days in a row, or we can't have sex twice in a day, or we never had sex um, twice in a day, or we never had sex two days in a row, and it has to, she says it hurts, and she can't do that, you know, and why do guys want this? Well, why does anybody want something that they like two days in a row? Why do you like, you know, coffee two days in a row and not just one day? You know, I mean, what, like whatever you like, like, why do you like to exercise two days in a row? Why do you like to um, hug your child two days in a row? I mean, if somebody likes something, they are going to want to feel like it's on the menu of their life and that there are not arbitrary, um, you know, rules and restrictions around when they can get it. So, um, what? OK, so there's multiple reasons. So there's the purely practical one of that you are not turning your wife on enough in the bedroom. She may be having an orgasm, but you're not engaging in enough foreplay so she's not wet and I talked about the normal wetness that you get if you put your finger into an alive human that is not perimenopausal or menopausal yet and many men mistake this for actual wetness and I talk about this in my female arousal podcast which is a paid one but certainly worth the uh, tiny bit of money and um if she is not aroused in these encounters, she can still have an orgasm. Remember that. Like, some guys don't understand that. She can still have an orgasm if she has not been really excited. She's kind of, like, tiny bit excited. It's like with a vibrator. You could have a, you could have, I could have a, um, a vibrator orgasm, like, near death, you know? I mean, it's a fucking machine. That's what it's designed to do, you know? I mean, it's like, it, it's, it's, it, it doesn't have anything to do, really, with whether she's excited. It's very baseline for a woman to have an orgasm, um, if she's able to have orgasms. She can figure out how to have an orgasm in the encounter. If it's enough stimulation of a certain type, she can have an orgasm. She, that's a, that's a minimal baseline. But is she really enjoying herself? Here's a clue. If she doesn't want to do it, maybe she's not, right? Because if you like something, then you want to do it. So if she can't do it two days in a row, she may not be enjoying it. And the reason she may not be enjoying it and also the reason that it may hurt, it's not supposed to hurt. That doesn't mean you're a big stud muffin. doesn't mean you have a huge penis. It just means she wasn't wet enough. Women push out babies. Your penis is smaller than a baby. Um, and so... You know, she's she's not wet, she's not turned on, it's not fun, and then it does hurt. And she gets, like, UTIs and shit because, like, it's like friction. It's like this friction penis going into, like, a not really wet vagina that you think is wet because it is, after all, a mucous membrane, so it does feel wet. Just remember, like the analogy I gave you in the other podcast, it's like if you put your finger in her nose, you know, it's going to be wet. 
It doesn't matter if she's cold. Does it has a cold? Doesn't matter if she doesn't. Still going to be wet in there. It it really it it it, it, it doesn't matter because she is a human being. If you put your finger in her mouth, it's going to be wet in there too. You know, it just means it's like the inside of her body. If you cut her open <laughs> in surgery, as she is, it's going to be wet inside there too. I mean, it, it doesn't have anything to do with anything. Many men have not seen a very aroused woman ever because they have not engaged in foreplay ever. So you got to understand that she may have had the orgasm, but her vagina hurts the next day because it's like rug burn because she was not wet enough. And so some women in their 40s and beyond get to the point where they need lube. So you should definitely be using lube. If she, if, if she used to be much more wet and now she's not, then use lube, of course. If she's really never been that wet and has always had this issue, maybe you should learn how to turn her on, you know, and that would take a much longer encounter than 10 minutes. In 10 minutes, a woman still hasn't stopped thinking about her grocery shopping list. You know, if an encounter takes an hour, then she has, and 40 minutes of that is foreplay, then she's going to be really good to go, you know, and it's not just porn that makes guys think it should be so quick. It's um, sex that you see on TV, let me tell you something, just like everything else on TV, just like, you know, the montage where like a whole 10 year relationship is summed up in like a few, you know, little images. Sex on TV is not supposed to be a one to one correspondence with how much time sex takes in the real world. <laughs> they can't show that whole thing. So in a romantic movie, if you see what looks like a sexual encounter and you're thinking it's from soup to nuts, no pun intended, it's not. Because they can only, you would be bored. I mean, maybe you wouldn't, but but they're not going to take up, if, if, a, if a TV shows 50 minutes, right? Like how much sex can they really show? They show, you know, a very quick encounter because the whole encounter between two people as romantically connected as whatever people on whatever TV show this is, they would have a whole encounter that would be the whole 50 minutes and that wouldn't be allowed on television. So, you know, if you've been basing anything about, about how much foreplay to do on anything that you've seen on any size screen, then you're wrong. You know, and you probably need to double or triple it because she needs to be excited. And I talk a lot about this. I talk about this in the Oral Sex on Women podcast. You know, there's there's just a lot to learn. So if she is hurts the next day, it is because if she was not wet enough and it was that porn montage type of sex that women despise where we try to see how many positions we could do within our eight-minute encounter because the man is, um, you know, thinking that that's what's exciting to a woman. It's so boring. The woman is bored to tears. She wishes she just watched TikTok. She wishes she had faked her own death. She does not want to do the eight positions because she's not even excited by the time you get to number one, never mind number eight. If you want her to want sex two days in a row, it can't hurt. And the way that it can't hurt is by getting her wetter and more aroused. The, the ratio of foreplay to penis and vagina sex should be like 20 times foreplay <laughs> time to one penis and vagina sex. No, actually, you guys always take my stuff as like, you know, the gospel. So from what you write in, so I don't mean 20 to 1, but let's say like 4 to 1, literally, you know, like so, so your encounter is 50 minutes, let 40 minutes of it be foreplay, teasing, getting her excited, maybe going down on her a little bit once she's excited. Remember, once you touch her genitals, it's not foreplay anymore. Stopping and starting various things and then the 10 minutes at the end, then maybe even she might even have the the holy grail, the orgasm where you orgasm together. Some people can do that, some people cannot. Some women need clitoral stimulation. Some um, uh, positions provide that, like uh, look up, uh, what is it, coital alignment technique. That's how most people who can have an orgasm from sex have the orgasm through sex. But remember, 75% of women can't do that anyway, no matter what you do. But if you got any shot, it's after 40 minutes of foreplay. So if she cannot have sex two days in a row, it's because she doesn't, she doesn't like it that much and it hurts and it hurts because of these things. Now, on the other side, it, let's say that she does like it. Let's say, okay, I'm not, I'm not sold, you know, but let's say she likes it. And, uh, but she just thinks you're an asshole because you don't do nice things two days in a row yourself. So there's never been a time in the history of your life, including uh, any time, really in the honeymoon stage, whatever, that you got her flowers two days in a row. Never. You never did something cute like that two days in a row. If you left her a little love note, you never did it two days in a row. 
you, some guys don't even say I love you two days in a row. How are you going to get sex two days in a row if you don't even say I love you? Like this is like a baseline. This is baseline, baseline. So if you don't say I love you two days in a row, how is she going to have sex with you two days in a row? Sex takes more time than saying I love you. You know, if you, let's say, did you ever clean out the garage and she was so happy, she was walking on air, she was so thrilled, and then she said, oh, and then tomorrow maybe we could finally clean out, you know, the baby's room. And you were like, what are you talking about? I just did the garage. Don't talk to me again until six weeks from now, max, minimum, rather. And then she's like, fuck you. And then you're going to have six weeks in between your sexual encounters because you are somebody who sets limits and boundaries and restraints and is closed-minded. Thus, you get the same kind of spouse. Many men are mad really at themselves, or they should be, for um, making a culture and being a person that attracted another closed-minded person. They don't like what it says about themselves. You know, so men who are closed-minded outside the bedroom get women closed-minded inside the bedroom. And on some level, they're aware that they're perpetuating this dysfunction with all of their difficult behaviors, but they don't like to think about it too much, so they get mad at the woman fully. It's not her fault. You think an open-minded woman would have been attracted to you with all of your preferences? No. Go back to my podcast on the cult of boundaries and preferences. If you're a guy that would never get flowers two days in a row, how are you going to get a blowjob two days in a row? How are you even going to get the shitty sex you're having two days in a row? A, it's shitty, definitionally, if you respond to that. If, If any of this makes sense to you about that she's not fully aroused, then it is not good sex and you need to work on it. Uh, But also, if you won't be romantic two days in a row and that's her thing, why would she have sex two days in a row? Doesn't make any sense. Your marriage is very tit for tat. And so it makes absolutely no sense. She doesn't want to be one down like you don't want to be one down. So in that kind of situation, everybody loses. And uh, the compromise is that everybody's miserable. It needs to be, as I've discussed, a 100% marriage where each person's giving 100%. So if you want the woman who wants to have sex to give you a gift every day, if you think that sounds so hot to have a woman who is, you know, wanting it every day for at least her ovulation week, you know, then why don't you be the guy that instead of when you do a romantic thing, you check it off the box, you're like, oh, what can I do to make it even better tomorrow? What can I make? Could do, uh, what could I do to make her feel like she's living in a romance novel? Then maybe she's going to want to make you feel like you're living in a porno. That's how the best relationships go in the honeymoon stage. The woman feels like she's in a romantic novel and he feels like he's in a porn. That's great. But if you're not the romantic hero of that book, then she's not going to be your porn star. And it doesn't make any sense to want her to be that because it, it, it's not for her. You know, she may love it. She may get off on it if you are loving and sweet and her her shining, you know, hero. If you are the man that she always wanted, then she gets off on being the woman that you always wanted. And she cares about being the woman that you always wanted because it's so obvious that you want to be the man that she always wanted. But if you have restrictions, if there's things that you would ever say you wouldn't do two days in a row, well, then... That's why she won't do sex two days in a row. And also the pesky variable that her literal vagina hurts. And her vagina hurts not because you've been giving her such a wonderful fucking, but because she's not wet enough. Because that if... Let's put it like this. Let's even say that you are some tremendous, you know, uh, 13-inch monster. Okay, fine. It would hurt, but usually like in a good way. If it doesn't hurt in a good way, if it hurts in a bad way, this is because there's a problem going on on the arousal end. So that is what you have to think about. And also you have to think about the emotional component of whether, in fact, you do nice things two days in a row or you have artificial restraints and boundaries and all of this bullshit. And so she is just responding in kind. It's just the culture of your marriage to be tit for tat. And so you don't do tat, so you don't get tit. I couldn't resist. Um, And that is why. All right, so if if this speaks to you, then perhaps you should try to do a whole bunch of romantic things one after the other. And if she says, why, uh, what happened to you all of a sudden? Are you, you know, did you lose your mind? You say, I realize it's kind of crazy. I've wanted you, I've had this fantasy all these years that you're going to want sex two days in a row. But then I thought, I've never been romantic two days in a row or I haven't in like 15 years. So you know what? It's stupid. And uh, maybe you're still not going to have sex with me two days in a row. But honestly, like now that I've realized it, then I should be who I want you to be. I should be ethical about it. I should be trying to be my best self. That will really impress your wife. 
also, you should start to do a whole bunch more foreplay. And go back to all my podcasts and stuff on foreplay. I have a post on foreplay. And of course, I have the, uh, you know, female arousal paid podcast, which you should really look at because so many men describe to me a situation where they think their wife is aroused. And if you give me a play-by-play of the encounter, their wife is not aroused. (laughs) And the wife often doesn't have any experience to know that she could be more aroused. So that's why I... I have posed some, I don't know what the fuck I've done, written, talked, but I always say women don't know their full sexual potential and most men don't either. And that is because most people have no idea about sex because of all of the taboos and all of the constrictions related to sex in our society. We teach our kids calculus, which they're never going to use, but we teach them absolutely nothing about sex or dating or intimate relationships. It's really terrible, but this is another rant that you don't need. And I will talk to y'all later. Have a great day, guys.